Now the truck we're working on today is a 2015 Ford F-150 King Ranch four-wheel drive. It has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. And what we're experiencing is a diagnostic trouble code P0430. P0430 indicates that we have a failed catalytic converter. The code is intermittent, it comes and goes but the cat is starting to fail. So we're gonna go ahead and replace both catalytic converters due to the age of the vehicle and the mileage. Now, if you have the 2.7 liter or the five liter V8, uh, the parts are gonna be different. However, uh, the procedures are pretty much gonna be the exact same. Now, overall, the job's not too difficult. However, uh, there are a couple tips and tricks I wanna show along the way. So before we begin, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna need to get the job done. So as far as tools go, we need a 21 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. We're also gonna need a 15 millimeter socket to get some of the hardware off of the exhaust. Uh, I recommend getting a swivel socket or a universal swivel joint. We'll need an assortment of extensions, a 15 millimeter open end wrench. Uh, for the O2 sensors, we're gonna need a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 millimeter wrench. We can also use an O2 sensor socket for that as well. And then we're gonna need 3 8 and a half inch ratchets. If you have a little stubby ratchet, they work great for some of the heat shields. Now, as far as the replacement catalytic converters, there's a couple options that you have. You can go with a Motocraft Ford OE part. Um, you could replace just the left or just the right catalytic converter, depending on which one has failed. Now, for this truck, we were experiencing P0430, which is a failure of the driver's side catalytic converter. And due to the age of the vehicle and the mileage, we're going to go ahead and just replace the whole downpipe system, uh, both catalytic converters. We went ahead and chose SPD Performance for the replacement rather than buying the Ford OE parts just because the OE parts are so expensive. You're going to spend about $1,200 for both catalytic converters and the white pipe assembly. Um, so the SPD performance uh, kind of downpipe runs about $800 and they do claim that you won't get any check engine lights with these high flow catalytic converters. Now the first thing that we wanna do is just spray down any um, exposed threads on any bolts on the exhaust system um, with some penetrating oil. If there's any rust on these threads, they could cross thread and uh, you're gonna be fighting yourself a lot. So just go ahead and take some WD-40 or any, any kind of penetrating oil and soak those threads down just before you uh, remove them. Now, when it comes to removing the stock downpipe and catalytic converters, there's a couple options that we have. You can go ahead and take a sawzall and cut uh, right here kind of in half and that makes uh, removing the system a lot easier. There is a band clamp right here that you can loosen up and you could just remove the driver's side catalytic converter or the passenger side catalytic converter if you're replacing one or the other. But today we're actually not gonna be cutting the white pipe. We're gonna be removing it all. So we're gonna have to remove the transmission cross member uh, and support the tail shaft of the transfer case to do so. All right, first thing, let's remove this shield here by using a 13 millimeter socket and there's four bolts that hold it on. All right, so next let's go ahead and remove the single bolt that holds on the passenger side heat shield. It bolts to the cross member here. So there's one on the left and there's one on the right. Next, using a 21 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove the two nuts that hold the transmission mount to the transmission cross member. All right, next we need to lift up the transmission. Um, we're gonna be using the uh, transfer case here just to lift it up uh, a little bit and alleviate some of the pressure. When we remove this transmission cross member, um, transmission has to stay in place. If you're two wheel drive, just use the tail shaft uh, to lift up. Since we're on a lift here, I'm going to be using a pole lift, but a bottle jack or a floor jack will work if you're doing this on your driveway or on the ground. So next, using an 18 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter open end wrench, let's remove the four bolts that hold the transmission cross member to the frame. All right, so before we drop the cross member, we gotta just lift up this little heat shield pad here. It's kinda just uh, stuck by adhesive to the cross member. All 
All right, next we need to remove the mounts for the exhaust. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. There's two bolts that hold each mount in. We're gonna be using a 15 millimeter socket to remove each bolt. All right, next we need to remove all four connectors for all four um, O2 sensors. Uh, the rear ones are kind of tied to the transmission, so let's go ahead and pull this down. Undo it. So when it comes to the front O2 sensors that are before the catalytic converter, we're going to go ahead and unplug the passenger side, um, which is just connected to the middle of the transmission up on top. Um, the driver side, we are actually going to remove the sensor from the exhaust, leaving the sensor plugged in because the connection is on the driver side valve cover behind the valve cover and this vehicle is in the air so I don't want to bring it down I'll just be uh, just be doing that all right so now we need to take a 15 millimeter socket and remove all four nuts that hold the um, downpipe to the turbochargers there's a total of four, there's two on each side. I'm gonna be using a swivel socket um, to get to these nuts because the top ones are kind of hard to get to. Uh, if you want, you can go through the wheel well and the top bolts or the bolts that are kind of on the outside are easily accessible through the wheel well. All right, so lastly, let's go ahead and take a 13 millimeter socket and we're gonna move the two bolts that hold uh, our downpipe assembly to the rest of the exhaust. All right, now with the two bolts that we just removed, we're free to go ahead and remove the downpipe from the truck. All right, so I have the old downpipe assembly uh, next to the new one kind of mocked it up. Uh, now's a good time to go ahead and remove your remaining O2 sensors and swap them into the new system. Makes it a lot easier to do it now than doing it while it's installed in the truck. Gonna be using my 7 8 wrench. You can use a 22 millimeter open end wrench or the spark plug socket to remove them. All right, so I just got done swapping in our uh, old O2 sensors into our new downpipe assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. We're gonna install the catalytic converters first, and then we can put on the Y pipe and connect it to the rest of the exhaust. We're gonna keep the hardware loose. That way we can manipulate the exhaust and move it around until everything is in place. Once everything is in place, let's go ahead and torque down the uh, flanges for the turbocharger first making sure that they're gonna seal, and then we can kind of move our way back with the rest of the hardware from there. All right, so before we could put our center exhaust section on, let's go ahead and put our transmission mount and exhaust hanger assembly back onto the uh, transfer case. Our new downpipe assembly is in, everything is finger tight. Let's go ahead and plug our O2 sensors back in. Then we're gonna start with the, um, the downpipe flanges right off the turbocharger. We're gonna snug them down, then we'll work our way back. And after that, we'll hit up each clamp and make sure that those are tight as well.
All right, so the exhaust is in, everything is bolted on tight. Let's go ahead and throw our transmission cross member back on. Let's go ahead and lower the transmission and install the two nuts that hold the mount onto the transmission cross member. Now it's time to go ahead and put our bolts back in for our heat shield that mount to our transmission cross member. Now we're set to go ahead and reinstall our skid plate for our transfer case. All right, so everything's bolted back together. Everything's tight. It's a good time now to go ahead and start the vehicle and check for any leaks. It's also a good idea to go ahead and let the um, the, the exhaust go through a couple heat cycles, get the vehicle real nice and hot, let it cool down, let that happen a couple times and recheck the torque on the flanges for the turbocharger and all the bolts for the clamps for the exhaust.